Without further ado, let's get to it, Pickle. It's the top 10 Texas high school football games of the week. Now, I want to put something up here. I put together this graphic yesterday. Okay? I want to be clear. Mistake. <laughs> There is a real chance there's something wrong All on this graphic, graphic. okay? <laughs> Everything has been moved around. I literally... I verified it at like 3.30 p.m. yesterday. Yeah, and I had you change it twice yes, after, after that after that. Fact. Yeah. <laughs> Things have changed since then. However, I think this is up to date. Let's find out. Let's go to the top 10 Texas high school football games of the week. We'll start in the middle there of the big game of the week. 7 o'clock Friday night. Hopefully still in Hawley, Texas, is the number eight Cisco Lobos, big damn Lobos, visit the number two ranked Hawley Bearcats with a district championship hanging in the balance. This is a huge game for a lot of different reasons. Obviously, a district championship means a lot for both of these teams. But also, I would also say that for both of these squads, this is an opportunity to really get some some huge momentum and confidence going into the playoffs um you know these are teams that we think are on the short list of contenders there in region one uh, and i think that they've got an opportunity to make that deep run we know what holly's all about uh they have uh they i think have really improved offensively uh, especially because i think their passing game has gone from pretty good to or i'm sorry it's gone from fair to pretty good mm -hmm. i think Rody hooper's really stepped up in a big way. Uh, they still are able to run the ball with Austin Compton, and their defense has been very good. Going up against the big damn Lobos um, of of Cisco, Hunter Long is back for his millionth year of eligibility <laughs> and running that offense like like it's just rolling out of bed for him. He has been fantastic all year long. Uh, Trenton, uh, Trent, Trent Houston has been very good running the ball as well. They are, and their defense has been strong as well. Uh, this game was, I want to say, 17-14 in the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. I would anticipate something pretty similar. Uh, I think it's going to be a low-scoring slugfest, and I think it's going to be hard-hitting and really, really a fun matchup there mm -hmm. uh, in 2A Division One. a great way to close out the 2A Division One regular season uh, with a showcase matchup of two top 10 teams in Cisco and Hawley. Well, yeah, I feel like we focus so much on the right-hand side of the bracket in 2A Division One because we've always just kind of penciled in Hawley this year. Mm -hmm. Like, it's usually between Hawley and Albany. Um, this will be, like, the first really big test to get a measuring stick on, okay, do we need to keep focusing on them or are we still focusing in the madness of the right-hand side of the back yeah. bracket? No, you're absolutely right. How about this? Yeah, private. 7 o'clock tonight in Plano. How about a top five matchup in the private school ranks as the Dallas Parish Episcopal Panthers, the number one team in the private school ranks, visit the Plano Prestonwood Lions in a really intriguing matchup that uh, the computer actually has as the number one, bless you, number Thank one you. versus number two teams in the private school ranks in all of Texas. This game is fascinating, mm -hmm. and and there's a lot to, to break down here. Um, this... this uh, Parish Episcopal has run through a very difficult schedule. Very, very difficult schedule. Remember, this is a team that has wins over Alito, uh, LBJ, and China Spring. Uh, and then they also, by the way, have a very narrow loss to um, South Oak Cliff. So this is a really battle-tested team. Uh, Daniel Novikov's squad is always very dangerous, but what happens when they run into a team like Plano Prestonwood, whose defense has been very strong all year long? They run the ball very well with A.J. Sibley, uh, and they're able to move the ball to a variety of different playmakers, but they want to keep the ball on the ground and grind it out. Uh, how does that defense match up against what's been a very explosive Parish Episcopal offense that's gone up against bat and, and battle-tested against very, very good teams? That is it. Uh, I'm really... I'm Really interested to see exactly how this game shakes out, uh, especially being moved up a day, mm -hmm. and especially uh, with uh, with a team like Parish Episcopal who's run through a difficult gauntlet. Um, how much does that matter? And can quarterback Sawyer Anderson put on a show as he has all year long? Fascinating matchup in the private school ranks, Parish and Prestonwood. Seven o'clock Friday night, we think. An humble question mark. <laughs> live on TexanLive.com. Let's go. It is the number eight team in the 6A ranks, the Atascacita Eagles, visiting, uh, visiting, <laughs> uh, they share the same stadium, uh, taking on the number 24 ranked Summer Creek Bulldogs. And uh, this is the, the closeout game for both of these teams, it, 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 obviously. And there's I don't believe there's anything for either team to gain in this one. Uh, I believe because they're going, they're going separate ways. Let me 
check my math here. But Summer Creek is going to the Division Two bracket, and Atascocita is going to the Division One bracket. Um, and yeah, they've already locked in those. So this is really just kind of a, a, a good capper and a quality football game. Is a Summer Creek team that has uh, that is that I think has they're they're they've been pretty battle tested. They're two they've got three losses, Klein Kane, Klein Collins and then uh they lost to North Shore in a very very narrow game uh back in 2000 back in week 8 I believe it was. This attack this uh the Summer Creek team I think is pretty dangerous. What they're able to do offensively I think is has been has been fun to watch. I think they've grown offensively and their defense has been pretty stout as well. How do they handle Zion Brown and this uh, attack state attack which is uh, still smarting after their loss to North Shore last week? How much does the task to bounce back? Can they get kind of reclaim a little bit of that confidence heading into the playoffs? So big game there on Texan Alive. I think this one goes one way or the other. I think that Atascacita either like bounces back like really, really mean, aggressive, or it could yeah. turn into one of those things we talked about with Stephenville last week. Can will they let one loss beat them twice? Mm -hmm. big so game. Summer Creek's good enough to do it too. It's yeah, it's it's either left or right. There's no going straight here. <laughs> 7.30 p.m. Friday night again, we think. No, that's wrong. It's Thursday. That's tonight. Huh. I told you. <laughs> 7.30 p.m. Thursday night in Lucas. The number nine team in the 5A Division II ranks, the Lovejoy Leopards, take on the Melissa Cardinals with a, another district championship game, uh, this game hanging in the balance. Um, I think both quarterbacks in this game are are really fun to watch. Uh, you look at Trevor Ham for, for Melissa. He's been very good. I think that Braden Hagel, the quarterback for Lovejoy, has stepped up in a big way. One thing I'm, I'm very interested in, both of these teams have kind of romped through district after taking two early non-district losses. Yeah. And w one of them, that, like their defense, this is the best offense they've faced in weeks, mm -hmm. months arguably, and the defense has got to be ready right now. Yep. ready right now, not only this week, but then heading into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, ramping up here. It's got to be full go for a district championship tonight. No, and I saw, like, I saw them play in that last game that was any sort of competition against North Crowley, and they they did not look good. I mean, yeah. really did not look good. And in my mind, I just kind of wrote them off from yeah. that point, and then it was like, you hear people start going, oh, yeah, well, they're number nine now. They're getting better. And it's like, yeah, but they haven't played anybody. So this will really answer some questions that we have specifically for that entire region of the bracket. Yeah. Of it, are they even a contender at this point? Yes. Uh, so keep an eye on that one. I believe our friends at WFAA have that, that game on WFAA.com if you want to watch that. 7.30 p.m. tonight in Dayton. Live on TexanLive.com. Yes. The a really tricky matchup here, mm -hmm. and a really interesting one, as the Dayton Broncos welcome in the Fort Ben Marshall Buffaloes, the number two ranked team in five A Division two. Um, we haven't talked a ton about Dayton this year, but I like this team a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, they're seven and two on the year, and I think that what they've been able to do, especially from an offensive balance perspective, is really interesting. They are. Uh, they've got a quarterback that they really like in, in Carson Horton. He's been very good, but they can run the ball very well as well with Vernon Harrison. They have got great balance to this offense and a diverse offensive attack that they've been able to put together that I think is going to be a really interesting challenge for Fort Ben Marshall heading into the playoffs. This is the Fort Ben Marshall team we think is on the short list of teams that can win the 5A Division II state championship. Um, we knew when realignment came out that they were going to be in a much more difficult district, and so they were going to be tested more. This is exactly what James Williams wanted. He wanted a good test against a quality opponent heading into the playoffs. Now, I don't believe, at least from the Marshall perspective, uh, that there's anything on the line here. I think I think Marshall's already locked up the district championship. Yeah, that seems right. Well, Dayton, yeah, they would have the the head to head over Dayton. They have the head to head over Dayton. They've already beaten PNG. G, so then they're good. And so yeah, so they they've beaten everybody else, but. If they were to lose this oh, no, one, I'm sorry. Yeah, if, if they, they were, were to lose, if they were to lose this one, then you would have a tiebreaker because they have would a, be both six and one. And yeah, well, I guess technically, then Dayton could win it because they would have the head to head. But they've already but, lost to Port Natchez Groves, so uh, that's the thing. Yes, okay. it's so it could be a three way tie. But Fort Penn Marshall, if they go a, out and get business, uh, done. but I believe from a tiebreaker perspective, they may already have it locked up. All that is to say, interesting test here for Fort Penn Marshall heading into the playoffs. Yeah, and it's fun to see them actually get tested at this point because we thought that they were super good, but to know that they're actually super good is is good for our predictions. 
7 o'clock tonight, Thursday night in Everman. This one's fun. A top 10 matchup in 5A Division II as the Midlothian Heritage um, Jaguars take on the Everman Bulldogs visiting Mar Stadium in a huge clash uh, between two teams that have I set on deep playoff runs. Everman's back uh, into the into the state rankings for the first time. Quarterback Jerry and Bespeed has been uh, has been fantastic. They have got this kind of thunder and lightning running back thing going with Eric Mills and Caden Brooks, and they are grinding it out, and their defense is playing their best football right now. They will need to play their best football right now going up against this, uh, this high-powered heritage attack. Quarterback Caden Brown has been very, very strong uh, all year long. This is a matchup of how well Everman's defense m- goes up against a really, really good heritage offense. That's the game. That's what I've got my mind, uh, my eyes set on this. If Everman's able to run the ball, it is game on. But if mm-hmm. they're not, I don't think they've got a great plan B. So that is a real interesting test there in on the E block tonight, 7 o'clock Thursday. Well, that Everman defense has been real hot and cold mm-hmm. on the year, too. Sometimes they're holding the opponents to, you know, 3.7 points, and then, but most of the other time it's been, you know, they want to get you into a shootout, but can it maintain? Yes, I think that's a, a great question. 7.30 p.m. Friday night in Rankin. It is a huge week in the six-man ranks, folks, as we've got a top 10 matchup in 1A Division I as the number 7-ranked Garden City Bearcats visit the number 4-ranked Rankin Red Devils for a straight-up district championship and a lot to learn uh, from this one. I I think that for Garden City, there's a Garden City team that I think is the very uh, the very classic better than their record indicates they're eight and one but their one loss was to may on the road and since then they have been absolutely rolling remember they're the only team to beat westbrook this year Mm -hmm. they've handled westbrook their only loss of the year so they are battle tested they know what they're getting into i think that that offense has really started to take flight for coach jeff jones's squad i'm interested to see exactly how rankin matches up against them because they do have uh, a common opponent. You know, Garden City is going to learn lean a lot on on their their big front. Uh, Owen Seidenberger has been very good, and they've got a running back in John Lopez who's been a star as well. They do have a common opponent because Rankin also played Westbrook and lost by one. Right now, Rankin is eight and one as well. That's their lone loss of the year. They've also got the they've got the only win over Balmeray this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got a win over Knox City, which is aged particularly well. This is a fascinating matchup here. Rankin is a team that I think their defense has been playing its best football right now. And I think that that was a young team that I think has grown up in a big way. So exactly can that defense for Garrett Avalos step up and can guys like quarterback Blake Wise make plays? I think that this is a huge matchup there in the six-man ranks. Obviously, uh, major playoff implications here. Uh, th- they're both in the playoffs, but this is a seeding game. And let me see if I can figure this out on the fly. The winner of this game, I don't know if I can figure this out on the fly. Um, the winner of this game will play, is that right? Yeah, so the loser of this game is going to play Newcastle in the first round of the playoffs. So you don't want that no. big matchup here there in Rankin. 7.30 p.m. tonight in Kilgore. Live on TexanLive.com. I'm so amped up for this one. It's a top 10 matchup in 4A Division One as the number 8 ranked Chapel Hill Bulldogs take on the number 7 ranked Kilgore Bulldogs in a fascinating East Texas clash for a district championship here. Uh, two teams that have followed a similar path. Both of them lost district games or non-district games out of the shoot. Both of them to, to really good opponents, mm-hmm. uh, but they started off 0-2 and have gotten white hot since then. Um, Chapel Hill, we knew they were young, and so maybe there's a little bit of an excuse of like they've got to kind of figure things out as they're going. They figured it out, and that yeah, offense, but all those young guys were also went to the state semifinal last year. That <laughs> offense is on fire right now. Desmond Brisbane, their, or D- Demetrius Brisbane, their quarterback, and running back Ricky Stewart are as advertised. They have got playmakers all over the place. Going up against Kilgore and Demarion Van Zant, I think I'm very slowly becoming one of my favorite quarterbacks in the state. This kid's awesome and is going to give them a real chance to win this win this game and win a district championship. Remember, this was a regional semifinal last year Mm -hmm. and Chapel Hill won in double overtime. I would expect a similar type game, very close. I think Chapel Hill's offense might be a little too much, but Kilgore's got the superior defense pretty clearly. That's what's fascinating about this game. Great game out there. Coin flip type game between Chapel Hill and Kilgore. 
6.30 p.m. Friday night in Jasper. Live on TexanLive.com. I audibly turned around and said, hey, we got Silsby Jasper this week when I've got the news for this one. The number four ranked Silsby Tigers, unbeaten, try to win a district championship outright, traveling to Jasper to take on the Jasper Bulldogs. And so Silsby, uh, Mason Brisbane, their quarterback, has been great, but like, the star here they is have the guy. Draylon Miller. Mm-hmm. Draylon Miller is a he is a freak show. He I mean, is yeah, the it's he is the one who was promised. If you have not seen him, do yourself a favor Friday night and tune into Texan Live and watch him. Mm-hmm. Watch the Draylon Miller show. This kid is scary, scary good. Um, and I think the underrated thing about Silsby is I think their defense has been pretty strong as well. Mm-hmm. Going up against Jasper. First year coach Kendrick Cromedy has done a sensational job with the Bulldogs, and they are uh, grinding it out on the ground as uh, and, and kind of doing old school Jasper stuff. Uh, we when we talked with him at coaching school, we said, "What do you want to make this team in?" He's like, "I just want to get back to our roots, and our roots are knocking the knocking the the you know what out of people." And they've been doing that. Their running game has been very good with uh, Zykees uh, Zykees Simmons and and Zykeel and had not. I think that uh, Simmons, who's is their quarterback, is a a terrific passer as well. They want to keep the ball on the ground though and win physically, especially if rain's going to be an issue here. Six thirty p.m. Friday night on on Texan Live, a lot. A, a huge game and a great kind of positioning game for both these teams. Can Silsby polish off an unbeaten regular season? We'll find out. And finally, 7.30 p.m. Friday night in Balmeray. That's right. Two six-man games make the roll. Let's list. go. A top 10 matchup in 1A Division Two as the unbeaten, as as uh, the, uh, rather the 8-1, and one, I think it is, uh, Balmeray Bears at number three in the state. Welcome in the number six ranked Sanderson Eagles. And this is a fascinating matchup for a number of different reasons. One of them is that obviously it's a top 10 matchup. It's a district championship game, things like that. Balmeray is coached by our friend Vance Jones. And Vance Jones is a former Sanderson coach. I believe he won a state championship at Sanderson. Mm-hmm. Um, is that right? I Maybe think not. Because so, he's done three, three no, state championships Marathon, at three Garden different City schools. And, and Balmeray. And but Balmeray, I think he did yeah. coach at Sanderson. Yeah, they lost the first game of the season to Rankin. That's what it was. Yeah. That Aff- was, aforementioned Rankin. And then since then, they've rattled off eight straight, and they have been uh, fantastic. Going up against this, this Sanderson ball club that I think is maybe a little bit of a surprise, uh, but they've got a playmaker in Ryan Darkus uh, at, the, at, the co- at the kind of spread back spot who I think is, real, is the real deal, and I think he's grown uh, in a big way. Their defense has been pretty strong as well. How do they handle this Balmeray attack, which is going to try to beat you in a variety of different ways. Of course, they've got they, they they've got guys like Tomas Contreras who's back in the mix. Wayne uh, Wayne Witcher up front. This is a I think this is going to be a physical ball game. I think the fact this game is at Balmeray is an advantage for the Bears. Uh, but this game is going to be a lot of fun. Top six matchup in one A Division two to close out the six man football regular season and district championship on the line. So a lot to a lot to glean from this one. We will find out exactly where these teams stand uh, at Kent Sanderson polish off an unbeaten regular season. We'll find out. There it is. The top ten Texas high school football games this week. You can watch four of those on TexanLive.com. Let's go. Watch a ton of games on TexanLive.com, especially tonight and tomorrow night. So there you have it.